Welcome everybody to another episode of our Digital Art Nights here at the Brickstar Museum. Um, for those of you who are familiar with what we do here, um, usually in a regular year, uh, the museum hosts an art night every Friday in the summer or every second Friday, um, where we open the museum um, until eight o'clock in the evening and we welcome um, visitors to come in for free and enjoy the exhibits that we have going on. Um, both art and historical, um, based on what we have going on that year. Um, with the pandemic, we've uh, opted not to stay open late uh, into the evening, but we've decided to be bringing you these programs um, digitally. So you're able to either watch them at your own pace uh, or every Friday as we'll be releasing them throughout the summer. So I wanna remind everybody that the museum is open regular hours. Uh, if you want to come in and you feel comfortable coming in, uh, we would love to see you. Um, we're open with limited capacity uh, and we always are encouraging uh, mask wearing as well as plenty of hand sanitizer here in the galleries to go around. So if you're comfortable coming in, we um, look forward to seeing you then. And of course, you'll be able to see in person some of the pieces that the artists will be talking about in the videos following my introduction here. So as I said, Art Nights um, originally started a couple of years ago uh, and we were open for free and we had local artists um, teaching um, visitors about various different types of art like pen and ink or how to create a comic book. So really fun things to do. And we'll be working on bringing some of those things to you uh, digitally as well. So this year we're gonna be posting um, digital artist visits. Uh, so videos, um, talking with um, local artists every Friday to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, as well as our website. Um, so as I said, they'll be accessible to you whenever you would like to watch them. And I just want to mention that this project is funded in part by a grant from the Maine Arts Commission, which is a, a independent state agency um, supported by the National Endowment for the Arts. So we really appreciate the support of Maine Arts Commission especially in this process um, that we're all still getting used to. So as, <clears throat> as we explore um, artwork tonight, uh, I hope that you enjoy. And it, of course, if you have any questions for the artist, these are obviously pre-recorded. Um, but if you have any questions for the artist or for the museum staff, um, make sure that you put your questions below uh, in the comments, obviously on Facebook or YouTube. And of course, on our, our website, there's a comment section as well. And then we will work on getting those questions answered for you. Tonight, we're going to be visiting with Lynn Blanchard Carr in the museum's bicentennial show called, called Perspectives 2020, where Lynn is gonna be talking about her piece that's in the show in the first gallery, and also talk to us about her process uh, of research that she puts into each painting that she does and how she became an artist. Here's Lynn. Hi, Lynn. How are you today? I'm great. How are you today? Pretty good. Thank you for coming to the museum to talk about your piece. Yes. Thank so, you for having me. Thank you. Uh, I'm wondering if you can tell us about how you started as an artist. Yes. Well, uh, my parents moved to Kennebunkport in 1971, and we lived across from Walker's Point when I was wow. growing up. <laughs> so I fell in love with nature. I fell in love with these towns. They ended up moving away, and I stayed. And I've been showing my work in this area since 1975. Um, I started out with sidewalk shows and juried exhibitions and went on to the Art Guild of the Kenny Bonks. The, um, the other places that I showed were at juried exhibitions in this area and then sidewalk shows. Mm -hmm. And um, I also had my own gallery in Lower Village oh, for okay. a while, mm -hmm. and now I show out of my house uh, at River Road in Arundel. Oh, fantastic. So um, the piece that you're going to be talking about today is uh, oil on canvas. Is that what you Yes, you're that's in? what I work in all the time. I love oils. I yeah. love the messiness. Of oil. <laughs> um, and I love the feel. I love to work big. Okay. Um, the reason I chose this piece was um, I, it really spoke to me, the women, the woman and the child who are in the piece. I wondered what it was like back then to be sending off your husband or your father to go off and sail 
the trade business sure. in that era and how long they'd be gone when you might not see them again. Right. And it also has the train station. You can see in the yeah. background, I put the train station in because that was what, that era, it was changing so much at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really interesting to see these are the last sailing ships that were built in the Clark shipyard in 1889, this one was built. It was called the Julia Francis, and I just found it an incredible era. The railroads were coming in to take over that business. Yeah, so. hard to write with such a nice perspective on it. <laughs> yeah, and I knew I could bring it to life with color. I'm a very colorful artist. If you've seen any of my other work, <laughs> um, I'm, I don't shy away from it, but I, I knew I could bring it to life more. Yeah, excellent. So, so um, in your process of creating this piece, did you, um, did you have any uh, problems creating it, or did something surprise you when you were the, It's on? totally different from how I begin my work normally. Okay. I normally, <laughs> before COVID, <laughs> would work outside and then bring it in to finish the piece. Well, this piece I had to do a lot of research on, so I used a lot of photographs of the era, but they're all black and white. So I had to really imagine what it would have looked like back then. And they, you know, they weren't big on color. This was one of the few mm -hmm. ships that was white at mm -hmm. that time. Oh, so wow. um, I thought that was interesting as well. So this one was done totally in the studio, which I have been sure. doing ever since this year. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is fitting. Um, so was this, when we put up the call for Bicentennial Artists yeah. um, to join us for the show, um, was this, did you formulate that idea from there or were you already working on this? No, piece? actually I formulated the idea from coming in here and looking at old photographs. Nice. And the other person who was very helpful was the Kenny Monk Port Conservation Trust. Oh yeah. And when I went through the photographs he had sent me, Tom Bradbury, mm -hmm. this was one that really spoke to me and I just said, I know I can do something with this. Wow. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. It, it really, and you can tell we have it here, uh, kind of in the center of the first gallery. Yes, I was <laughs> very happy about my placement, <laughs> for sure. Um, this exhibit. It's a wonderful exhibit. I hope more people get to see it. Yeah, we're working on it. Um, there are certainly people coming in, and then um, we're doing going to do some more virtual tours of the exhibit because a lot of people aren't comfortable coming in, which is okay. Right. So right. they'll get to see it on online anyway. So good. Um, let's see. Work it. I I know I have a million questions. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me about um, how did you kind of fashion? And you were just talking about the research that you did, but um, how did you fashion the people's Clothing. Were you looking at pictures there too? Yes, it was that time period that I was fascinated with. And, you know, even in the summer, they wore long clothing. And <laughs> I'm like, that would be very hot around here right now. <laughs> right. But I'm assuming this was late summer, so that it wasn't, it might have been a little chillier. Sure. But even the little boy <laughs> in front of the woman, yeah. um, he has long clothing on. So it must have been a uh, celebratory occasion for the boats to be launched because you, as you can see the other boats have little people in the boat. Right. Yes. So they're watching and looking onward as this is going to be leading the river. So that's fantastic. This is a great piece to capture the as you were just describing the history of what it was like here in Kenny Bunk. Um, right. And they, at, at a time. changing era at that time because exactly. once the railroads did come in it did changed the shipyard business altogether. Oh, yeah, so totally that right. became more <laughs> of tourism, which we have today. But back then, <laughs> the, they were the only way we traded. And Maine was big on trade and shipyards. So. Yep, for sure, exactly. Very interesting time. It is, it is, and it's really excellent that you focused on it, on your piece. Um, can you tell us what you're working on, on now? Oh, I'm working on a piece. Um, it's actually a lovely piece of Goose Rocks Beach, and it has in the foreground, it has the daylilies that are out at this particular time. And in the background, it has a hammock with just the water crashing in the background. 
Wow, so. this sounds very relaxing. It is. <laughs> it's, it's very summer piece. So. <laughs> I've been very busy. I actually have two pieces I'm delivering today wow. that have been sold. So I'm not desperate for, you know, it, it's been slow, yeah. but you can take more time with things and you really work them through instead yeah. of rushing and trying to get out for certain shows. Sure. So. So have you noticed uh, during COVID, I know um, some artists that we've talked to, in fact, someone I was talking to yesterday was talking about, uh, she was a, a basket maker, so she was talking about how it was a little bit of a challenge to get materials at this point. Yes. Um, have you noticed any changes like that? Frames are oh. <laughs> especially difficult. Um, my framer, she used to get a lot of her things from Massachusetts and oh. they were not shipping. Um, so I had to go more uh, nationally to try and wow. focus on frames, but right now I'm working on a lot of canvases that I can paint the exterior edges of okay. instead of worrying about framing them right now. Wow. Where That's the funny. business has gone down, it's like, okay, don't put out all the money <laughs> at this point in time. Too right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've been in it for a long time. I, you know, as you can tell, since 1975, that's 45 years, so yeah, right. um, it has its ups and downs all along. But, For sure. <laughs> but sure. I love what I do. So you That's can, all that matters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> as long as you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Exactly. That's what my parents also said to me, so we, we all try for that goal anyway. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, last question, do you have a favorite piece that you've ever created? or? I ideas? do. I have a favorite piece that's in my living room right now of shipwrecks of 1920. Oh, and wow. there are two shipwrecks that went down off the coast of Cape Orpheus Harbor. Mm -hmm. I was going to put it in and then I said, no, no, uh, you know, do something new for this show. But though that shipwreck piece is one of my husband's favorites. Wow. I researched that. There was many pictures of just one of the ships that was left by the time they were photographing it. It was a January storm in 1920, and there were actually two ships that went down. One was carrying lumber, and the other was carrying granite. And you can tell wow. why those would have sunk <laughs> yes. very fast. So, Wow, excellent. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing that with us. Um, is there anything else that I didn't ask that you wanted to share? No, I think, <laughs> I think that's good. I, I, enjoyed the show. I think it's a wonderful show and I want more people to come in <laughs> and get to see it. Thank you, Lynn. That's fantastic and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs>